using an 18 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead and remove the bolts supporting uh, the transfer case skid plate. You wanna get into the fuse box, you wanna locate the fuel pump relay. That is this 10 amp fuse right here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. So once we get into the fuse box here, we wanna go ahead and remove this 10 amp fuse. This is for the fuel pump relay. Now we're gonna go ahead and start the vehicle until it runs out of gas. Now with the vehicle depressurized of the fuel pump pressure, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall that 10 amp fuse back into its original position. And then we're gonna put the cover back on. We're gonna go ahead and take a pick and release this red tab here on the fuel line. Go ahead and pull that off. Now I want to go ahead and try and disconnect these lines here. Gently pull it apart. Once that red connector is released from pulling off one side, you can use a small flathead screwdriver and get up under one of the little tabs. And there's going to be a clip that comes out the other side. So you're going to go ahead and release one of these little ears here and then go up on the other side and pop that side out. Okay. Using a pick or a flathead screwdriver, you can go ahead and release the other black clip from the other side. You should now be able to separate this line here. Use a pick and release this little clip right here. It'll push it on both sides. Pull the clip up from the top. And we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the line. Using a seven millimeter socket, we wanna go ahead and remove this clamp. We wanna go ahead and separate this fuel hose here. Using an 18 millimeter socket, go ahead and start removing the tank bolts. Make sure you have the tank supported before you do this. All right, we're gonna go ahead and gently lower the gas tank here a little bit at a time. and see what we have to disconnect for this tank coming down. Could be a couple clips. Wanna go ahead and release these. There's a connector on the top here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the electrical connector from it. There's a little retainer clip on the top. You're gonna lift up with your finger and work that connector loose. There's a blue clip on the back here. I'm gonna go ahead, you might be able to just use your fingers and pull up on each side of it and lift up on that clip. I'm gonna go ahead and work this switch out. Actually, another secondary clip on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that as well. All right, so once you get this secondary clip, you wanna rotate the sensor. And it'll slide off. We're now gonna go ahead and remove the clip from this hose right here and pull this off. And we're gonna go ahead and remove the clip from the one behind it and pull that hose off. We're gonna go ahead and loosen this clamp right here for the fill tube. We're gonna go ahead and pop this off here. I'm gonna go ahead and try and manipulate this tank to come on down a little bit further. Some of the fuel lines run along here. You wanna go ahead and pop these out of the tank retainers and do this the whole 
length back. So these clips, I've been using a pick to open up the back side of it and remove the clip. You can also press right on the middle of this, right where the black button is right there, push it in, grab the other side, and it will simply pull apart like that. So you wanna do that to the rest of those connectors. We use a 21 millimeter socket to go ahead and loosen the lower control arm forward bolt uh, just to get the bolt to come out without removing the capture nut on the back side. This allowed for the tank to start to lower. I'm gonna try and remove this connector right here. I'm gonna go ahead and release the red locking clip. And once that is out, we should be able to pull this connector off. Remove this fuel line here. Drop this tank down a little bit further. On the front of the tank, we have another hose here. So you want to push in on this clip, pinch it, and it should pop off. Like so. Using a screwdriver, we want to go ahead and loosen this lock ring. Go ahead and remove the fuel pump and sending unit. We're now going to want to go ahead and remove this clip off this rod. Use a pair of needle nose. Be careful. You want to keep that from shooting off anywhere. So we're now going to go ahead and try and open up these clips right here. disconnect these connectors here. I'm going to release this clip here. Access the pump like that. All right, now we're going to go ahead and open up these clips right here. Pop that out. Might be able to use a pick, make it a little bit easier. Whatever tool works good for you. Once you have those clips removed, you can go ahead and pop this clip off right here. this one as well. This one here might be easy to get with a little screwdriver. Work in there and just pop that out. Be careful not to break it. You can use a pair of needle nose pliers, grab the bottom of the pump and wiggle that out. Go ahead and reach in here and just connect this connector here for the pump. Using a flathead screwdriver, you can get in there and just connect that. Got the pliers, and you can go ahead and pull that motor out. And go ahead and remove these rubber protective caps. Swap over the retainer seal, put that on there, and go line this back up. There's a rubber O-ring down inside. We want to go ahead and uh, use a screwdriver or whatever. I just popped it out and go ahead and replace that. Get install the O-ring on top of the pump itself. I'm going to go ahead and line this up. Drop that down inside. Make sure the connector lines up. 
push it in. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and reattach the strainer. Reinstall this into the canister. Make sure the canister is cleaned out. Drop the pump down inside, lower it down. At the same time, make sure that this pickup hose drops down inside as well. You want to get your connector lined up. Press that into place. Before that falls in, you want to go ahead and get your spring put on. Get this lined up. So once things are close to being in, which we want to do now, is reconnect these connectors to the top here. These are specific, so they should only go in one way with the notches. Work the pump down into place. Next is getting your rods to fit through. And go ahead and put your retainer lock ring back on. Get that clip to sit in place. Maybe use your needle nose pliers or a screwdriver. Snap that on. Reinstall the O-ring. And we'll start to reinstall the unit. and press the sending unit down into place. Put your lock ring down. Once the lock ring is on, go ahead and tap it in, lock it into place. Go ahead and reconnect the electrical connector here. Push that until it clips and then push the red lock tab over. Now we're going to go ahead and connect the fuel line here. Push that on and get your lock pushed down into place. All right, so now with the tank up a little bit of the ways, we're gonna go ahead and start clipping in some of the lines into their original routing position. And snap that one in there. This line here will press on and clip there. Snap it on the back. And go ahead and start reconnecting the main fuel fill tube. I'm gonna go ahead and start connecting some of these lines. I'm gonna push these in and lock them into place. I'm gonna do that for the rest of these connectors. Now let's go ahead and connect the connector. Line that up. Push it in, it should clip into place. Gonna tighten up the clamps for your fuel filler tube. And it'll be this one and the one in front of it. Up on the front of the front of the tank, we'll go ahead and reconnect that fuel line there. Go ahead and reconnect the fuel line into the little notches on the tank. Get a few bolts started here on the front of the tank. I'm gonna to go to the back of the tank, line that up and get a couple bolts in the back. And then we'll install the rest of the bolts by hand. I'm gonna go ahead and snug these up and then we're gonna to torque them to 48 foot pounds. Torque these to 48 foot pounds and do this for all of the plates. Line up the front skid plate here. Try to get one of those bolts started. Go ahead and get the other one started here. And we 
to the back and get these four started. Torque these four bolts to 48 foot-pounds. 